Okay, so in this video, we're going to be covering a couple of things. The first is basically we're going to be covering key bindings in VS Code, and we're going to be doing so through a practical example. For instance, if you've used any, like really nearly any application on OS X that has tabs, you probably would expect the behavior of command one to change your tab to the first tab, command two to the second. You'll notice it's not. In VS Code, the only way to change tabs like that is through option, through command, alt, and then the arrows. Dang. So how do we get normal sort of tab functionality going in VS Code? Well, we're going to do so with key bindings. So what better way to learn key bindings than to do something super practical, like fix the tab handling, which you'll see there's like a thousand issues on the uh, GitHub tracker for this application. So I feel like it should just be the default, but it's, I'm not the developer of this, so I can't make that call, obviously. So what we're gonna do is head to the code, then into preferences, and then keyboard shortcuts. Now you'll notice here we have all of our key bindings and we could click the pencil here to edit them, right? You could desire your key combination, escape to cancel. And so we could come in here and change our, uh, and change our key bindings by hitting, let's just say, Command C. Obviously, you do not want to make Command C something other than copy, because that would probably drive you nuts. But as you can see here, it's really nice and easy. The interface is good. I mean, it works. You can search for key bindings. You can edit them easily enough. You can see what it is. But let's say we wanted to go ahead and give some more advanced customizations and kind of come in in here and uh, having to edit each of these. So we want to click on this open and edit key bindings .json. Now, let me close our side editor here. And as you can see, we have a giant array in the left hand column, where basically, we have, uh, let me, uh, the font size is way too huge on this, but let me move this over. You can basically see what we have here is, let's zoom this out just so you can sort of see the structure of this. We have inside of the array, we have an object that basically has a key as well as a command and then a win. Now the win is optional. We won't even be using that in our current version. So you could say in Zen mode or when editor has selection, blah, blah, blah. We want these things to be available all the time for us. Now, what key bindings are we going to be using? Well, you can actually, this is a document, right? This is a JSON document. So we could actually search for stuff. For instance, if we wanted to search for command, like command plus the number one, right? You'll see that it's currently accessing fold level one when editor in text is in focus. Now what we're looking for, shift command one, here we go. We have command one just by itself without a win. So this is the blanket one. And the action is workbench action focused first editor group. Now that's a bummer. That's not what we want it as. So let me just copy this whole line here. I'm going to copy the entire one here. And now if you're not the type to get in and want to change this stuff, I will have uh, what you need to copy and paste into your key bindings.json. I'll have that just available for you. Okay, so let's move over key bindings. I'll have a link to it in the comment, by the way. You can see we have an array. I'm going to paste this in here. And there's a whole bunch of extra space here. Um, you don't need that extra space. Um, some people like to keep things sort of organized that way. Whatever, get rid of the last comma. Well, like, nice thing is, is if you have linting on it, it will lint, lint this file as well, because it's just a JSON file. So now what I want to do is I want to actually change the command one functionality. I no longer want it to be workbench action focus first editor group. That's a long thing to say. What we actually want to change it to is a property that's workbench action, but then instead of focus first editor group, we want the property to be open editor at, and then index the number. So open editor at index one. 
Okay, and you can find all of these properties in this default key bindings. Now, keep in mind, I found this just online as a snippet, so it's not like uh, I knew this offhand or something. And you can save this. Now, and thankfully, my linter took care of some stuff for me. Now, let's actually move this over. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to click on just any one of my files. And now if I hit Command-1, you'll see it successfully jumped us to app.test. Now, when I hit command.2, it obviously does the sort of default functionality, which is jumping over to the second group. The good news about this is that it's really super easy to duplicate this. We can hold shift, we can hold option or alt, uh, they're the same key, and we can hit down. Now, by holding shift, option, alt, whatever, it copies and moves a line down. The same thing works with the up arrow. It's a super handy, handy, handy uh, little keyboard shortcut there. And we have command two, two. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Um, okay, let's jump down. We got it number three. Keep in mind, we have to do this all the way to nine. Uh, although you probably don't if you're watching this and you just want to copy this from me, then you don't have to do this all the way to nine. No biggie. Okay. Boom. Okay, right, I'm going to do these next few off camera and then fade into it. Okay, just like that, I have every single command one through nine uh, jumping to a particular index here. I left zero blank because... Uh, I don't really want to go to 10th index or something like that. I don't even know if you can, to be totally honest. But as you can see, we have command 1 through 9. We have index 1 through 9. Hopefully, I didn't duplicate any of those. And now, if you wanted to, you could remap um, the previous one, the focus first editor group to maybe like control plus one or something like that. And in that case, you would just change the command to CTRL plus one. And then the command is whatever we copied over originally. I don't need to do that because I, I honestly don't jump between groups that often. Eh, actually, let's do that. I take that back. I'm, I'm totally uh, thinking I would actually do that. Let me come in here and paste this in and whoop, move this over here. So instead of command plus one, we can have C T R L plus one control one is now going to change us from the uh, second group to the first focus group. And we can do the same thing with C T R L two. We can change this to second. I don't know. It's kind of interesting that it's a second editor group, but over on the other one, it's index one. Like, I feel like maybe they could have done focus editor group one, you know? That's just me, whatever. Okay. Now again, we can change control three to third. Again, should have just used the number, whatever. Okay. Control plus three. Now, so this is the contents of this file. Like I said, I'm gonna make this available for you to just copy and paste and turn your key bindings.json. Important information is that there are uh, brackets here. So you need these array brackets, you need your JSON file to be valid, and this will work. If it doesn't have these things, it will not work. So make sure it's totally valid and works. So now we have our key bindings. I'm gonna move this over here so I can illustrate my new control group and I can hit control one to hop back over to this group, control two to hop back over to key bindings, back again, we're gonna command two, command three, command five, I just hit five instead of four, five, whatever. But as you can see here, these are now the default tab functioning that you would typically come to expect from an application on OS X. So not only did we explore custom key bindings in VS Code, but we also made the app a little bit handier to use if you are used to stuff like this. Cool. So this is deep. So this is customizing key bindings and OS X tabs in VS Code. 
I'm gonna keep on uh, coming out with practical VS Code tutorials here, stuff that you're gonna wanna do all the time. I was planning on recording a few more today, ran out of time, I was busy editing a podcast. Wes Boss, if you are familiar with the Wes Boss, uh, he and I are starting a podcast called Syntax.fm where we're going to be covering tons of web development topics. Uh, the first three episodes are being edited and should be out really, really soon. So if you're a fan of mine or a fan of Wes Boss, or a fan of both of ours, you should enjoy this podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun, and so far we've had a great time recording it. So head over to syntax.fm, and maybe there will be a website up by the time you're watching this. If not, check back in a couple days, or follow us on Twitter at syntax.fm. We're going to be having a lot of great content there. Also, if you would like to learn how to build native apps using JavaScript, head over to store.leveluptutorials.com and purchase React Native for everyone. You do not need to know React, you do not need to know React Native, but I will teach you how to make native applications with React Native from scratch. By the end of it, you have an actual APK and whatever the iOS package file is that you could upload directly to the App Store. So head over to store.leveluptutorials.com, React Native for everyone. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.